From a self-described outcast who grew up on the wrong side of the tracks to Australia's most successful hip-hop journalist who interviewed Rihanna when she was just 18. Whether people like me or dislike me, I know how I feel about myself and it doesn't move me at all. Well, that's a very confident attitude for Aw, thank you. <laughs> my mom, as my mom and me. In her new memoir, Tell Her She's Dreamin', Simone Amelia Jordan shares her deeply personal story about defying the odds to make her dreams come true while inspiring others with big aspirations. And Simone joins us now live in the studio. Lovely to see you Lovely here. to see you guys. Thank you. Now, Tell Her She's Dreaming. <laughs> here it is, is a guide for women to help break free from the mould. So take yeah. us back to your younger days. Why was it so important to prove that you could when people were telling you you couldn't? Oh, I think women in any line of work have it tough, but uh, if you're from a marginalised background or you grew up with a single mum like I did, shout out to my beautiful mum, um, you have it a little bit tougher. And so I always say we don't, because uh, I grew up taking public transport, we don't get to take the express train. We don't get yeah. the straight shot. We take the all stops to the journey. Uh, we get there eventually, but, you know, we really have to claw our way through to get there. So. Uh, when I was young, I was moved from the inner west of Sydney to the central coast, which in the late 80s wasn't very multicultural. So we had a hard time and uh, it drew me towards hip-hop music yeah. because in the late 80s, that was the golden era of hip-hop yeah. and the artists were really socially conscious then and they were very pro-black, they were black artists, but I understood what they were saying for their communities and to their communities, but that effect trickled down to me to be proud of my own identity uh, as a Cypriot and Lebanese woman. So I've, it's been my best friend since then, and it's really kind of pushed me through the darker moments when I thought I... Every time I wanted to give up, mm -hmm. um, it was my dreams and self-belief, but also hip-hop, and, and my single mum who got me there. How, wow. how were you yeah. introduced to hip hop? Because I know a lot of people had to resonate with with with, with, a, with a particular message, and, and maybe there was one, not a particular song, but yeah. there was something. Who brought that into well, your Well, I wanted life? to be a rapper first. Did awesome. you? Fantastic. Yeah, Fantastic. yeah. My, my my lyrics are in the book, and obviously I decided to be a reporter instead. Um, well, Bust a Move was a very big song here by Young, uh, Young MC, so that was a big one. Uh, but it was Salt and Pepper. Yeah, I awesome. love Salt and Pepper growing up. Queen Latifah had a song in 1989 called Ladies First with Moni Love. Moni Love was the first really big uh, female international rapper. She was originally from the UK mm. and she ended up becoming a friend of mine and she wrote the foreword to the book which awesome. is a full circle moment. So it was, you know, lots of different songs. Public Enemy, I was very, like, militant <laughs> as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Look at all these incredible people you've interviewed. Your career has literally taken you to the centre of the global rap scene. Tell us, for instance, tell us about meeting J-Lo. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, I mean, you're you're an old hat at this. You're the OG, you're the OG uh, of, of entertainment interviews, right? So you're you know very kind, this. but... Uh, but uh, uh -huh. but J-Lo, I'm I in was, the presence of greatness uh, here. Yeah. I was 20 years old. I was an intern and I was at Juice magazine, which was a... It was a rock music magazine, oh, yeah. yeah. So they said... To, there you are, look. That's me with J-Lo. Um, I was so excited. So <laughs> they didn't want to interview her because it was a rock music magazine. Who, who wants to interview J-Lo? Yeah. Give the intern the job. I said, are you kidding me? Because 20-something years ago, J-Lo represented to young girls that looked like me and everything in between. She was, like, a huge inspiration. So I got to the press conference. It was this uh, Elizabeth Bay, very fancy mansion. She arrived on this beautiful yacht and I was there in my sneakers with my big gold hoops. I, obviously, I'm still channeling j <laughs> to this day. She'd love it. I, she'd love it. And, uh, yeah, everybody was asking their questions at the press conference and I got the mic and everyone's looking at me. I was the youngest there and I was, just started crying. <laughs> I was like, I love you. You're my inspiration. They're like, who let this crazy fan in? <laughs> but I ended up asking her, you know, you're a triple threat diva, singer, actress, dancer. Is there anything you can't do? And she was like, oh, my God, like, I love basketball, but I'm so <laughs> uncoordinated and I practice and I can't get it. But the stories the next day across all the mainstream outlets led with that anecdote, yeah. which I was very proud about. So, yeah, it was a great moment. Well, we that's great. That I need to listen yeah, to. Yeah. I can, I can see you how... you remember the day? Yeah. <laughs> but, no, I was just saying, I could see how you would become an inspiration to people as well to, fo to follow that and, and through your own writing yeah. and, and maybe through your own experiences <laughs> as well. No, no, but it, it's, I'm very I think emotional it's, it's, it's because, thank you, this is... Um, I grew up with a single mum in Western Sydney and we moved to the Central Coast for a little bit. 
my grandmother... My grandmother was very resilient. She raised seven kids basically on her own. Wow. <laughs> she worked three jobs and my mum was the dreamer, right? So I had the resilience and hard work ethic of my grandmother's generation, the dreaming of my mum who wanted to be in the circus, God bless her. And I combined those two to chase my dreams but also have the work ethic. And I just want young women to hopefully... These are not easy times mm -hmm. To, mm -hmm. to know that through these times you have to hold on to those dreams and you will get there, you know, no matter what. What about this collaboration yeah. you did with Reebok on your own oh, sneaker? Oh, yes. So that was Incredible. in 2012. I was living in New York City. Reebok Classics approached me to design a sneaker. I was one of five women from this. around the world. And uh, five women around the world, I was chosen and I designed it based on Princess Jasmine oh, from yeah. Aladdin <laughs> yeah. because... Growing up, again, there wasn't too many Middle Eastern... Mm -hmm. um, and, and I loved her. That was a character I fell yeah. in love with. So she was my design inspiration. And it sold out. It was limited edition. I have a yes. couple of pairs left. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a well, couple you've got of pairs. Yeah, 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 yeah. They might be worth something one day. Uh, for sure they will. But like <laughs> I said, for a lot of people, when they resonate with music, it's yeah. because of the lyrics. And now your words uh, in talking about songs and whatever it might be. I mean, they're so, so important. Oh, thank you. And I think you deserve everything that you're oh, getting. Thank I, you, I really Tristan. want one of these books. And, and I'm, thank you very, very much. I'll pay much. you for it, but I want to <laughs> read it She's though. dreaming, but he's dreaming as well. well that's oh, yeah. we... Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you where you can get it, Tristan. You can pick up a copy of Simone's memoir. Tell her she's dreaming from all good book retailers. Uh, thanks so much for being with us Thank this you, morning. Angela. Thank you, Tristan. You're, you're absolutely awesome. Thank you're you. great. Gorgeous. Fantastic.